On this Debaco University student series, we're going to get to see Kira's many jobs in the early season of 2023, where she's progressing from a student to becoming an employee and learning all aspects of cannabis production. All right, if you thought cannabis growing was just the plants, well, Kira's gonna walk us through some different aspects that she is getting exposed to. Uh, and it's always nice to see her student kind of progress to become an employee. She's worked her way up to being a true employee here at Sweet Heel. Um, she discusses the importance of being versatile and flexible since different times of the year require different tasks to be completed. We're gonna see the early springtime here. This involves working directly with the plants, but she also has some additional tasks that are important to make the entire system System, company, and growing environment work to everyone's advantage. Now she's going to start us off in the nursery house, which is her main job right now in the springtime where she's taken a bunch of clones, getting plants established, she's been scouting for pests, and being proactive in defenses against those pests, and of course the daily plant care. Checking, making sure monitoring, the water, making sure everything is labeled, and just making sure the plants are able to show their best work so they can continue into a good vegetative state. Let's hear from Kiara now. Hi everyone, it's Kiara, and today I'm back at Sweet Heel, or as it's known as GG Ag Tech, where I took you guys last year for a few tours of their facilities. Now, I'm an official employee, and I wanna tell you about the different jobs that I have around here. So right now we're in our nursery, which is where we have all of our little baby plants just start out. Pretty much one of my first jobs here was taking many, many, many clones of our mother plants and putting them into rock wool. Once they get their roots in and everything and they're ready to be transplanted, we bring them into here and plant them based on bays. This here is all Miss B, all in front of me, all behind me. And some of our other plants in here include Sour Lifter or Durban Poison, but really these Miss Bees are my babies. Um, another job that I typically do while I'm here is give amendments to these girls. I mean, we're pretty much raising them, so we need to make sure that they're happy and healthy. So one of the amendments that we add are these marigold plants. Marigolds are great for deterring pests like aphids and thrips from your plant as I guess they don't really like the smell. I'm not sure why. Another thing that we do to amend our plants are add beneficial insects. Some of the insects that we do add are ladybugs and praying mantises. Our ladybugs also eat aphids and thrips and praying mantises really eat anything they could get their hands on, which is good for us when we're trying to eliminate the pests that we don't want. And it also helps that they're super cute. This is my first and main job, which is just taking care of the plants, making sure the girls are good, and everything that comes with that. But I do have a few different jobs around here, as does everyone else. It's the only way to keep this entire greenhouse going. I'll show you some of them. So with cannabis, not all jobs are flashy. Labeling is very important, and it's a critical form of documentation, as we'll see from Kira. One of my most important and arguably most overlooked jobs in this field is labeling our cannabis plants. I take great pride in making sure that all of our labels are big, legible, and kind of cute. For each of our plants, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two if they're different species or anything based off of the appearance alone. So that's why it is so important to have big, consistent labeling for all of your plants, even if they are organized in a way that makes it kind of easy to guess and figure out what type of plant you have, you never really know which one it could be. This one is Sour Lifter, while the one right next door that looks pretty similar to it is actually Cherry Wine. So it is very important for all grows of any scale or no matter the grower to be efficiently and properly labeling your plants. This is a step you definitely don't want to overlook or skip in the interest of time. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know what the difference between your plants are, you're going to lose incredible amounts of profit and be kind of upset that it, you could have just done that in a half a second. 
Now, having a good customer connection and good marketing is very important because unfortunately, customers don't get to see the actual plants. The products get the most eyes. Sharing the product is well presented, is critical to keep the business going. It needs that continual attention. It makes a great indoor job for Kiera. Another one of my jobs that I kind of didn't expect going into this field was dealing with our customers and marketing. Now, in order for any operation to really run smoothly, everybody kind of needs to be on board with everything and helping out where they can. I personally have a big love for editing things on my phone or making things just look pretty. So I offered to do some of our promo for our products. What you see here is a light box that I like to use to take photos. In here we have our canagars, very pretty, and so we need to make sure that we get good photos of them. I'll go and I'll take my photos that I take here, put them into some form of editing app, and create tearaway sheets, advertisements, posters, informationals about each of our products. I mean, it really just depends on the day. And also, depending on if we change our packaging or if the laws ever change, we pretty much need to update these all of the time. So it is a very critical part of any business to make sure that you have somebody working on marketing and farming your customers. At the end of the day, this is what gets your customers' attention and not just how pretty the plants are in the greenhouse. Right now, I'm taking promotional pictures for our canagars. This one is our Sweet Elite Mountain Mango, and I want to make it look as appetizing as possible. I don't really have a specific list that I go through when I'm making these types of projects, but I just kind of go with what the product really entails. These are very slim, pretty, so I could just put as many as I want really in here next to each other, make it look aesthetically pleasing, get my photos, isolate them within an app, and it looks like you hired a professional. So this is why I really enjoy being able to do all of our advertising and kind of customer based things since I being a perfectionist like to see things like this. And so this is my more indoor job in Sweet Heel. Now potting up plants may seem repetitive, but there's a lot of preparation, checking and double checking of equipment. While the planting process can get routine, the volume and high standards makes this an all hands on deck job. Actually, an incredible amount of prep work is required in order to even think about having the plants into this bay. I mean, I'm not sure if you could tell by the camera angle or not, but none of these pots actually have plants in it. We've spent weeks cleaning this greenhouse, sweeping, bleaching, making sure that everything's clean, getting our compost together, which we make ourselves at Sweet Heel, in order to make sure that our plants get proper nutrients and a proper home to stay in. I mean, we make our own compost based off of our organic material that we go through while doing our basic day-to-day -day things here. We had to make sure that our drip lines are all properly working. I mean, if just one of those doesn't work, then we lose an entire plant. And as meticulous and tedious as it is, we make sure that every single one of them is up and functioning before the plant comes in. We still have this entire bay to cover before we could say that plants are even allowed to come in here. When we do finally put the plants in here, I would say it'll take about two weeks, maybe more, but I hope to show you it when we're done instead of talking about all the prep work. In case you thought planting was easy work, I kind of wanted to describe to you how I go about planting our plants. Now, here, seems pretty simple. We have a hemp plant in a pot, but it's actually way more than that and takes up a lot of my time, especially during this part of our growth season, working here. In order to get this plant to look like this, we first have to take a clone of it from a mother. We then put it into rock wool and let it root for about two weeks. Then we transplant it into a smaller container. And then finally, once we think it's ready there, it can go into this container. But that's not it. Once it's in this container, we make sure that we add our drip lines for irrigation, make sure that all of our fertilizers are properly working and of the right amounts, and add rice holes to the top to prevent the soil layer from being all moist and encouraging bug growth. Now, imagine this one plant multiplied by the entirety of this greenhouse. For a few days now, my team and I have been working 
on this bay alone, right? What you see in front of me and behind me. But everything this direction has still yet to be potted completely. So you can imagine how much time it takes us just to get a few plants into some pots. 